almost every single one of us knows someone who has some affiliation with a person who has a disability, whether physical, emotional, intellectual or neurological. It could be us, it could be a family member or someone in our community. Autism is such a condition that affects the development of certain areas of the brain. Autism is a lifelong condition that affects the way uh, a person makes sense of the world and interacts with the world around them. So it affects the way they communicate with other people. Some autistic children have quite severe language problems and language delays. Some don't develop any language at all. It affects the way um, they interact with other people. So some children may find real difficulties in making friends and relationships. Autism is a spectrum disorder, meaning there is a wide degree of variation in the way it affects people. Every child on the autism spectrum have unique abilities, symptoms and challenges. With staggering statistics and an increasing number of Muslims affected by such disabilities, what actually is autism and are we doing enough in our communities to empower those with the condition? While some people have shown a general awareness about autism, the lack of knowledge about the syndrome and its effects on those involved is really unfortunate. Knowledge is the key to empowerment and without it we can end up excluding different individuals from our community without realising it. To find out more we are going to pay some people a visit who have autism to find out how autism has affected their lives. My name is Yasmin and uh, when I was seven I was diagnosed with high functioning Asperger's syndrome. At first it, at first it was a shock to me and my mom and even to my dad. We all, found, we all found it difficult in the first few years to get used to the thought of it and that I wasn't normal for the first, for the first few years but my mum is an amazing mum, so she tried her very best with everything possible to research all about autism and how to help me in our family life. And um, I told her that I wanted to try school. I first um, took Yasma to school when she was seven. She actually wanted to go to school and um, I decided that um, it was a good thing for her to, to try. I wasn't, I was, she just had the diagnosis of Asperger's so I wasn't sure about her going to school. I wanted to cocoon her and protect her from ba basically people's comments and views and, and judgments and misconceptions. But I sent her to a school, I sent her to a private school at first because I thought the smaller numbers of children would really benefit her because there was only 11 children in the class and this was ideal for me. I felt really safe, it was around the, the corner from my nursery. I felt very safe and thought this would be ideal for her. I was trying my best to do my learning with my string because my string helps me and the teachers were very nice, the LSA was nice but I felt too like locked up with that LSA beside me, I didn't like it, I felt more freer without the person sitting right beside me, it didn't feel comfortable, it was like somebody was ordering me to do something that I didn't want to do and that was the learning. I didn't want to do the learning and so instead I just kept on asking if I could walk around the school and shake my string and that school just worked out okay and um, so I decided to leave the school anyway. I didn't really enjoy the learning and I thought maybe me and my mom thought if I was homeschooled again I might get a better chance of learning and enjoying myself at the same time. So my mom organised a lovely tutor to come in. Uh, I was at this point I was feeling a bit better for being out of uh, being out of school, but I was still really, really in my own comfort zone. I didn't want anybody to destroy that. I didn't I didn't want anybody to interfere with that. So again, I didn't like learning, and all I wanted to do was hide underneath tables, do any possible thing to distract my teacher from trying to teach me.
one of the psychologists who, who was part of the diagnosis said to me that um, she asked me in for an interview and uh, I thought it was all a meeting about Yasmin and that everything was going to be told how I was going to fix, fix this, you know. And uh, she sat me down and she was very calm and very serene and um, that in itself kind of, you know, put me uh, on a sort of a, uh, a negative feeling because I thought, oh, she's so calm, she's so, this is not real, this can't be real. And um, she said to me, um, I need to speak to, she needed to speak to, her, to me about myself rather than Yasmin. And that my sort of hyperactive, go get it, uh, never stop talking, always out there trying to research everything, was not helping Yasmin. It was actually causing a lot of sort of triggers to her anxieties because um, autism, Asperger's, comes under the same umbrella, um, is full of anxieties and fears and um, sort of on, on, and unable to see the world in the way that we see it. And I was trying to make Yasmin see the world the way I see it. And that was my mistake. Children with autism have trouble with communicating. They could have trouble understanding what people think and feel. This makes it very hard for them to express themselves either with words or through gestures, facial expressions and touch. A child with autism who is very sensitive may be greatly troubled, sometimes even pained by sounds, touches, smells or sights that seem normal to others. I remember one day when I was sitting down in my, on my desk and um, I had my string beside me and I was doing my work just like all the other children and I just picked up my string for literally two seconds and they told, they, took, they told me that they have to take it away. And I asked them why. I said, there's no reason being why I, sh I shouldn't have it. I need it to relax me. And they just, they just, uh, they didn't understand me at all. And I was trying to let them understand me, but it wasn't possible to get through to them. It is a basic human right of all individuals and children also to be free from discrimination and lack of opportunity because of their disability. As Muslims, our responsibility to disabled people in our community is even greater. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged the hosting of people who are disabled and sharing meals with them in Surah An nur verse 61. There is no blame upon the blind, nor the lame, nor the sick, nor yourselves if you eat from the houses of friends. The Prophet, peace be upon him, once set up a masjid in a blind man's home as he was not able to travel to the mosque for prayer. He also honoured a woman with a psychological illness when she asked to consult with him privately. Adults and children alike can face these tribulations and families everywhere are being tested and are in need of our help. These are the people of Jannah living among us who serve a great deal for reward. We need to ensure that our masajid, schools and community are equipped with the right information and knowledge in order for us to help those who are autistic. But as much as we need to help these people, we also need to be inspired by them. Autistic people could be the purest, kindest and most positive people you will ever meet and they could teach us a lot about ourselves. Why don't we try to get into their shoes? What does that feel like? It must feel really strange because here we are as we're called neonatals, you know, us people who supposedly, because we haven't got autism, we know everything. We actually know nothing. We, um, we don't see the, 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 the strength of what our children with autism have. They're absolutely phenomenal. They're amazing. Um, they're a gift from God. And um, Yasmin shows me that every day of my life.